Yeah. <laughs> Before that was something called the AA Quarterly, yeah. which, mm, which, which was run by a council. And Alvin decided yeah, he hated AA Council. He wouldn't have anything to do with them. He wouldn't meet them or anything. And he said it was a really boring, dull journal. So he started AA Files, uh, a, something that he wanted to reflect more the kind of dynamism that he expected from the AA. Mm. And um, Nigel Coates, he did the first cover which was rejected. So I've asked Nigel to say something, whether he'll reply, I don't know. But we've got a copy of the first cover, which could go on the back. Uh, and so, I mean, part of my thinking was that um, AA Files is now dull again. It's a, I don't know where, do you, do you read it? How many of you read AA Files? Yeah? Oh, well, maybe I'm wrong. The paper quality of the AA files is excellent because yes. it handles glue perfect, so it's very good for collage. Yes. Yeah. So. <laughs> yes, I went once on a long trip for two months, and I the only book I took was the A file 68, I think, and I read it for two months, like front to back, the whole thing. Wow! And it was quite good. That's a meeting of the Architects Revolutionary Council. I don't know the date. I've asked Dennis for the date. This is Brian Anson, who used to run a, a unit at the a, a how, did, only did housing. And these people were very influential of stopping private development to Covent Garden. If they hadn't worked so hard at it, Covent Garden, worked, they were going to flatten it and just build high-rise office buildings. And they stopped all of that. They also made a bit of famous housing project. On, they're not famous for you because you're too young. Uh, Coin Street on the south bank of the Thames. Anyway, that, that wouldn't be allowed now, would it? Where, where are the women? No women. Just men, just blokes with beards <laughs> and dark glasses. Yes. So it's, it's sort of reminding me of the Last Supper. Mm. I don't know how many of them there were at the AA, but Brian Anson certainly was. Yes, and uh, it was the Architects Revolutionary Council, and they were against everything. Yeah. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. They were just no, called they the country. Country. They just weren't interested in the AA Council. Okay. But Alvin was always very much, he thought the AA Council were a meddling, bunch of meddling old blokes. The Council was Alvin's employer. Uh, yes, basically. Yeah. Yes. So he managed to skip them, even though he, they were his employer, to make the AA files. He didn't want the council to interfere with the academic life of the AA at all. No, he thought they, were, they weren't qualified to do so, they weren't elected to do so. They were just elected to make sure the AA didn't become a hum, home for selling drugs or a um, whorehouse or something like that. You know. but Alvin was very good at hiring people he didn't like, but thought they were really interesting or, or good. And I don't think he ever liked Brian Anson, but he respected uh, the, his political commitment to a sort of the social purposes of architecture. Um, like he didn't, he hated Leon Crea, but he hired Leon Crea because Leon Crea was, do you know Leon Crea's work? Yeah, but, but because he greatly respected Korea's view of the city and how he was working with the city. So I think that's why so many um, architects became famous, because Alvin gave them space, even though he didn't agree with them, you know, which I think is a bit different now. But it may, maybe not, I don't know much about the AA anymore. So Ghost Dance Times, I've said, was Martin Pawley, who did a very famous diploma thesis, which is in the archive. Something like, it's called a time house or something like that. Mm -hmm.
But if you ask Ed Bottoms for Martin Pawley's work, and he's written two or three books, his best one is about uh, sheds. You know all the big sheds you find on the edge of cities for IKEA and stuff like that, and he was writing about that, the sort of um, anonymous architecture. Mm. But, oh yes, yes, that's Rudofsky there, isn't it? But, mm. but most of those sheds do have architects, funny enough. But I've forgotten what he called it. Anyway, I'll try to find out. And so that was Ghost Stars Times, and then there's another called uh, Ars. Um, this is uh, Peter Cook. They're making fun of Peter Cook, making fun of me as well. Cedric Price, somewhere down here. Well, though I, I know it's a bit corny what I'm going to say. People of your age tended to be much more disrespectful. And so tutors were there to be made fun of in a creative way, you know, like, who do you think you are, you know? We had uh, Paul Shepard came to talk, didn't we? He's another of, of this generation. He was a student and then he was a tutor and did some very beautiful drawings, which are again are in the archive. <clears throat> and he said part of the role of students was always to be, be ahead of your tutor, to be to know more than they did, to kind of wake them up, which I think is, I don't know what you think, you're all, you're all students. So from Lorne's perspective, you're a much more obedient generation. You're, you, there's often quite a fear of a tutor because you feel they have power over you. So I'm not making any particular claims for this, for this, but but I think that there was a, a slight, a sort of difference. You know, there was. Um, it wasn't a lack of respect. I think there was. Um, you felt you were all part of the same thing. That they weren't just superior to you. And you're, you're part of the same um, uh, project to explore what, particularly at the AA, not what architecture is or what it, how it's built or what is built, uh, but what it could be, what it might be. It might be this or it might be that. Mm. But I think there can be choices as well. I mean, like they have a choice. Now they try to say that like they put things online, and they also keep the the manual one as well. I mean, like the, the hard copy one as well. I mean, like they can distribute to many people. And you mentioned about the collage, right? The collage. Yeah. I think the collage, the good collage, maybe like made by our hand. And and I think when we lay out by our hand, we also free ourselves from the from the screen as well mm -hmm. and also free ourselves from the computer program as well mm -hmm. so that the mm -hmm. i mean like the way to making this the method the, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I, think, I think collaging on the screen is quite different to collaging with yeah. 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 isn't it although it's funny on the screen the, the instructions always cut and paste aren't they? Yes. Yeah. The, yeah and they because also, you have to when you're collaging with scissors and paste you have to accept the picture that you've got, don't you? Whereas on the screen, you can make it bigger or change yeah. the colour. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's yeah. really, really hard, I think. It, you have more restriction yes, when more, you are yes. physical, and that gives you a better direction to do stuff yes. different. Yeah. Yeah. Like, that's why I would say it's nice to have a magazine, because I read it very differently like this. I can take it away in a park and yeah. read. Versus, I don't really like to read on my phone, I read mm. on my laptop, and it's a different, like, I perceive this as a different thing, like this, versus if I just see the photos online. Yeah, I think mm. that's because, I mean, I saw this online, and I feel like now that I've seen it printed out, it's different. Yeah. yeah. yeah.